Hello everyone. Welcome to Manifest IS and today we'll be discussing the science and environment questions that have been asked in Civil Services Mains Examination 2021. As we see uh, the question paper of previous years, like uh, generally the component of uh, science and environment together will be for around uh, let's say 70 to 80 marks. So generally six, seven or eight questions are asked in uh, the third paper. So basically when we look into the questions, usually the generic questions will be asked. At least half of the questions will be generic. Like what is what? What is what in the sense like applications of certain technology or like general, uh, uh, I mean overview of certain technology, all that thing. And when it comes to uh, less than half of the questions or let's say when six questions are asked around two questions like they will be uh, oriented towards a specific technology so uh, a student or an aspirant has to have the uh, uh, in-depth knowledge of that particular technology otherwise that cannot be attended and when it comes to the generic questions like almost all of uh, the aspirants can uh, answer them because uh, like applications, like MyRide applications will be there either for 10 marks or 15 marks. They can uh, uh, tackle that particular question. So this has been the trend throughout. But whatever that we are seeing uh, in this year's paper, uh, 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 these are all on uh, expected lines. So except the UNF C global, uh, uh, cl I mean the uh, COP, that is uh, Conference of Parties 26, which happened uh, in the November. Uh, 2021. So apart from that, nothing has happened as far as the uh, global uh, trend or the global initiative is concerned in environmental protection. So that was very much expected and we have got almost two questions from that particular area only. Then with respect to air pollution, we have got one question for WHO standards uh, along with the comparison with India's national clean air program. Then also, S-400 defense system, air defense system that was there in the news, it has um, raised the eyebrows of the entire world uh, when India purchased some of the uh, defense system. So S-400 that was there in the news. Along with that, the blue LEDs or uh, let's say white LEDs uh, when uh, uh, they were uh, discovered like three uh, decades ago, but only in 2014, the Nobel Prize was given for its discovery. Nowadays, it's a, a, a common, like LEDs are all over, like the world has embraced LEDs. So that is why that particular question has been asked. Apart from this, like uh, uh, biotechnology question, generally the achievements as far as the biotechnology is concerned uh, in India, so that has to be uh, tackled. So all these are the questions which were very much expected, but when it comes to S-400, like it has gone to the specificity of that particular defense system. And also when it comes to clean air program or WHO standards for clean air, so that also uh, uh, is a very specific question. Otherwise, like other questions can be handled uh, uh, with an ease. So I'll be discussing those questions one by one. First, how is S-400 air defense system technically superior to any other system presently available in the world. So basically when it comes to air defense, air defense in India also, we are depending mainly on the missile system that is Prithvi variant of the missile or basically the Dhanush. So we have two different uh, system. One is a advanced air defense system and one more is Ruthvi based air defense system we have. So these are the systems. But just to have the excellence over these or like just to uh, uh, have the evolution of our uh, uh, defense system, like we uh, signed a deal with Russia. Actually, this discussion started in the year 2016 in the BRICS summit. In the BRICS summit. But finally, the signing was done in 2000. 18, uh, this raised the eyebrows because US's, US's third system, US's third system, so that is terminal high altitude air defense system, it is the competitor of S-400. But in comparison with 
uh, it was thawed, like there are like better specifications when it comes to S400 system. So just to discuss the specifications of this S400, it is a long range surface air missile system, surface to air, and this 400 is nothing but, it can cover a radius of 400 kilometer surface to air, radius of uh, uh, 400 kilometers surface to air. And it can simultaneously track numerous incoming objects also. It is not just about the missile launch system. It is also about like uh, including the radar or the transponder which can uh, uh, easily sense uh, the incoming enemy uh, 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 flying objects. Then it can detect all kinds of uh, uh, airborne uh, uh, machines or like aircrafts, missiles and UAVs and it will cover around 400 kilometer and it can be used on the ground targets also. So we should not have a misconception that uh, when it comes to surface to air uh, 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 missile system or the defense system, is, it is not about the airborne. When it can hit airborne, it can hit the ground based targets also. So that is also provided in this S-400. And it is able to intercept the cruise missile. This is a very important uh, feature of this cruise missile because it comes in a straight line. It is not a ballistic one and comes very closer to ground. So this particular S-400 system can retaliate against uh, this uh, cruise missile also and it can operate up to 40 kilometer, 40 kilometer because the cruise missile will be uh, flying in a low altitude, low altitude. And this is the, uh, 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 I mean, this is the details of the deal in 2018, $5 billion deal was stuck between India and uh, uh, Russia and Russia plans to complete the delivery by 2025. So this is the uh, uh, latest update what we have. But compared to THAAD, compared to THAAD, the uh, range that it has, the range that it has 400 kilometer, it is better than that of the THAAD. Uh, uh, THAAD, somewhere it is lesser than 400 kilometer. And when it comes to the multiple target system, the uh, S-400 can engage different enemy targets uh, simultaneously. But when it comes to the specification of THAAD, it is not so versatile. And the third difference would be S-400 can launch different types of missiles, different types of missiles having the different specification when it comes to its range and its weight or like its uh, target. So uh, 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 there is a huge vert uh, versatility in S-400 air defense system. But when it comes to THAAD, it is a bit lower than that. That is why we have gone ahead with uh, 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 Russian S-400 and this whole system of S-400 defense uh, is called as TRIUMF. This whole system is called as TRIUMF or it is called as TRIUMF S-400 uh, uh, defense system. So that is why we have gone ahead with that. But again, as part of international politics, like US had sanctioned few things on India for not purchasing third uh, 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 missile defense system. So this we have to explain for 10 marks. So if you write the specification in comparison with the other missile system, like you will get around four. So at least four specification you should be writing. And with respect to the purchase and the deal and the politics associated, politics associated with this thing, you will get around uh, uh, two marks. Though it is science and tech question, uh, but the background of this particular purchase and the effect of the purchase and the consequences like we have to write in brief. Next question, it is with respect to Green Grid Initiative. Green Grid Initiative, this is talking about green, that means it is clean energy. We are talking of clean energy from uh, 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 the renewable sources, renewable sources, uh, especially solar, wind, all that thing, and grid. So we are trying to connect it. We are trying to connect through like smart grids, micro grids, and it is not just within the boundaries of a nation, but beyond those boundaries. So these are continental grids, what we are talking about continental grids and this was the latest news or as part of 2021's COP that was uh, uh, held in Glasgow, uh, UK. So uh, many uh, new things have uh, come up in that particular uh, uh, 
uh, global meat. So here, with respect to the coal, with respect to the targets of different countries for the next five years, all that have been discussed in this particular deal. After Paris deal in 2015, after that Paris deal, definitely this deal is uh, the significant one. And uh, if at all, the questions that would come from UNFCCC in the future, we have to focus on Paris deal and also the Glasgow summit. So uh, we need to uh, talk about this Green Grid initiative. This and partnership with India's or International Solar Alliance, and we have a name for it, One Sun, One World, and One Grid. So that is why it is called as OSOVOG. OSOVOG. So basically, these are the initiatives of COP26 held in Glasgow. And this is the Global Political Coalition for Clean Energy, as I told earlier, and it has been endorsed by more than 80 countries in that particular meet. This is the uh, very important uh, uh, outcome of the Glasgow summit and also civil society organizations have come forward to share their contributions as far as the green grid initiative is concerned and its aim is to accelerate the construction of new infrastructure for world powered by clean energy that is what I told the intercontinental intercontinental grids will be uh, uh, developed and also when it comes to the infrastructure even the expansion of Renewable energy generation capacity will happen in the energy rich locations. Uh, basically, wherever we can tap solar energy or wind energy, even ocean thermal energy, the geothermal energy. So, all that will be tapped. And the expansion of this infrastructure would happen in the higher potential areas. And this grid will be connecting even the solar panels, charging points for electric vehicles, and also the micro grids. So, micro grids are like very important as we compare the smaller dams with the bigger dams, this microgrids, like they're very important and we focus on them, especially for providing the energy for the rural sector. So that is what is targeted in this one. And even fighting the climate change, fighting the climate change is part of this one because like whatever the technology that we are building or whatever the new initiative that we are uh, um, embracing, so that will be like climate change resilient, climate change resilient. So the whole idea of UNFCCC is uh, to fight climate change and it is a small initiative in that. And when it comes to International Solar Alliance, like this is the initiative of 2015, 2015, like post uh, 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 this one, post uh, Paris deal. So India and France were uh, in the uh, 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 forerun of this particular initiative. So the Prime Ministership of uh, India under uh, uh, Narendra Modi and uh, the <coughs> France President Holland. So they were the leaders for this particular initiative that is International Solar Alliance and its uh, 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 headquarters. You will find in India only, you find it in India, in Gurugram. And uh, the global meet with respect to International Solar Alliance was conducted in uh, uh, 2015. Uh, to be specific on the date, it is 30th November 2015 and as part of COP21 uh, uh, in Paris. So this was the launch, but the uh, global leaders meet had happened in India, that is in Gurugram. And this particular initiative talks about the tapping of the solar energy to the maximum extent in the tropic countries. So tropic countries, basically the countries which lie partially or fully in between the tropics, that is Tropic of Capricorn and Tropic of Cancer. So nearly 120 countries have agreed upon this particular International Solar Alliance. And as far as the uh, uh, country specific uh, initiatives are concerned, India is marching ahead as far as the solar energy uh, 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 producing potential is concerned. So with respect to the investment in the infrastructure for tapping solar energy, India has taken a, a, a huge lead and as far as its commitments to the Paris deal or even to the Glasgow summit, like it is based upon the uh, uh, rampant increase of the uh, potential of India as far as the solar energy production is concerned. Okay, so this is this is very factual question what they have asked. They have asked when this ISA was first floated. So that is what has been asked. 
so basically for addressing ggi that is green grid initiative and uh, finding the other dimensions of this you will get around four marks for explaining isa like what exactly is that and when it was floated so you'll get around two marks so this is what you can expect from this particular question next question it is about the global air quality guidelines and it is given by who given by who and this particular thing started in the year 2005 the first uh, update like it came in 2005 and later in 2013 like some amendments had happened to this one and uh, like in the present context in the present context again the guidelines have been improved uh, in all these guidelines when it comes to air pollution maybe it is with respect to air pollution standards all that thing the permissible levels permissible levels are going to increase uh, uh, when it uh, when you take the uh, European standards or the Bharat stage standards what we have for the vehicular pollution like basically the uh, amount what these uh, vehicles can emit so that is going to reduce uh, per kilometer or like whatever the standards that are there so similarly in the new guidelines also those permissible levels are going to be lowered so that is what has been targeted so here we have to see in comparison with India's national clean air program also what exactly we are targeting national clean air program but along with that in India we have air quality index also this is just an indicator this is not a program air quality index and also in India we have national ambient air quality improvement program so NCAP basically it targets only the particulate matters but when it comes to the global air quality guidelines it targets six different pollutants six different pollutants that is two particulate matters those two particulate matters are of size 2.5 micron and 10 micron then the ozone o3 then nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide when it comes to india's targeting or indication like aqi includes all these things but when it comes to the abatement of these pollutants like in india like we have not focused on these things but we have focused on our particulate matters especially when it comes to national clean air program and uh, both 2.5 microns and 10 microns have been focused here in 2013 as i told earlier in this uh, particular air quality guidelines there have been certain changes that is with respect to the outdoor air pol uh, pollutants and the particulate matter which can be carcinogenic which can be carcinogenic it was in uh, 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 agreement with who's agency for research on cancer so some of the air pollutants uh, 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 that that are outdoor so they can cause uh, cancer so that is what was uh, told since then these particular pollutants are targeted then it also highlights the good practices for the management of black carbon black carbon this is the basic carbon that is emitted after burning of any fossil fuel or for that matter any biomass then the ultra fine particles very thin particles which can enter our respiratory system originating from sand and dust storms so this needs addressing so in india also like we need to think upon this because looking at the construction uh, that are happening in india this sand pollution and also the climate dependent dust storms climate dependent dust storms so they have to be addressed in our national clean air program and also the equal importance has to be given to the indoor indoor uh, 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 pollution abatement also but as far as national clean air program is concerned we are focusing mainly on the outdoor and that too on the particulate matters and as the question is asking about the changes that have happened after 2005 so that should be focused with respect to the downgrading downgrading or like the permissible levels have been lowered so for any better standard or any gold standard the level of these permissible you know, like pollutants like they are going to be lowered so in the phasing down manner in one or the other day we are going to you know like uh, tolerate these particular uh, 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 pollutants to the very lowest levels so that is what is the improvement 
uh, uh, of these guidelines compared to the 2005 levels. And with respect to NCAP, we are focusing mainly on particulate matter 2.5 and particulate matter 10 microns. And we have a target up to 2024 from the levels of 2017. We are going to reduce this pollution by 20 to 30%. So the improvement what we can do for NCAP is including all other pollutants which we are trying to uh, monitor through AQI, AQI. So that is what is the difference that we have to write. And also the carcinogenic uh, outdoor pollutants we have to focus and also the equal importance or the emphasis has to be given to the indoor pollution too. So that is what is the improvement that we have to bring. Otherwise, in NCAP, just for the extra points, city specific and the sector specific uh, targets have been set in uh, 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 the program that is India's National Clean Air Program. Then here, resuspended road dust control. Yeah, this has been covered under even the air quality guidelines of WHO and construction demolitions related dust. Yeah, this is well covered. And also the power sector industrial emissions. So basically when it comes to fly ash or other particulate matters or the black suit, so that has to be targeted. And also the vehicular pollutions. So Bharat stage six we have adopted to. So all these are the initiatives that have been taken in India under national clean air program. So this is just for extra marks, but when it comes to uh, the uh, global guidelines, what we have, we'll get three marks for uh, explaining what all are these uh, air quality guidelines. And when it comes to the changes after 2005, you will get around one mark. And in comparison with NCAP, that is National Clean Air Program, you will get around two marks. This is what you have to explain in this particular question. Next, it is the general question on biotechnology. Though it looks like a generic question, you can write, but when it comes to the achievements, when it comes to the achievements, you have to write the specific achievements that are done by Department of Biotechnology in India. Department of Biotechnology, it works under Ministry of Science and Technology. So this is one department along with the Department of Science and Technology, what we have. Uh, so here we have to write the specific uh, achievements of DBT or Department of Biotechnology. When you go to the website of Department of Biotechnology, you will have a particular tab for achievements of uh, uh, this particular department. So if you take the first achievement as far as the fortification is concerned. So fortified so products are the uh, products which are produced due to uh, fortification. Fortification is nothing but the addition of the macronutrients or the micronutrients to the food during the food uh, uh, processing level. When it comes to biofortification, it is the uh, uh, betterment of the nutrients. Again, addition of micronutrients or micronutrients uh, at the uh, uh, germplasm level or at the seed level. So as far as India's success is concerned, like fortified wheat flour, fortified rice premix, these are given for the school going children in India and protein rich wheat. So this is part of our Poshan Abhiyan. Poshan Abhiyan again to fight the malnutrition in India. So we have come up with the Poshan Abhiyan. This is also adopting some of the fortified foods and iron rice. Iron rice, rice which is enriched by uh, the minerals like iron. So that is under discussion and in future we are going to adopt to this also. And iron folic acid tablets for pregnant and lactating mothers. So that is very necessary because most of the mothers in India and the newborn in India are anemic. To fight that one, we are trying to come up with the iron folic acid dispersible tablets. So this is also one of the discovery or the, uh, the development of the uh, Department of Biotechnology. And mineral vitamin mix for fighting the malnutrition. So this has been launched. And also like therapeutic foods, formulation, therapeutic food formulation, especially for the infants, infants that is also developed and also the diagnostic kit for identifying the genetic modification in the food that is also, uh, uh, I mean, uh, discovered and also the rapid diagnostic kits for the pathogens for identifying different uh, uh, disease causing microorganisms uh, that has been developed by DBT along with that. One small contribution that is with respect to hearing screening device developed by DBT. That's 
uh, uh, name is Soham. This is Soham. So this is what we have to write. And along with this, the other uh, contributions of uh, uh, DBT, that is uh, Department of Biotechnology Missions. One is Atal Unati. It is like the very uh, umbrella program under uh, the department and it carries different programs like Garbhini, which will be addressing MMR and IMR and antimicrobial resistance mission, so which will be fighting the superbugs which have been created. So again, it comes under the uh, biopharma, that is biopharmaceuticals and in CEPI, this is the coalition for the vaccines, for vaccines. So vaccine development is one of the flagship program of Department of Biotechnology. And mission innovation that is in the area of clean energy. Along with that, for agriculture purpose, we have Bio Kisan, Bio Kisan. And with respect to bio uh, 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 data exchange, we have one more program as Bio Pride. For women researchers, we have Bio Care as one more program. And pharma sector, that is National Biopharma Mission, like it is again a, a very big program of India to excel in the sector of biopharmaceuticals. So these are the extra things what we are uh, 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 looking, but the main answer revolves around the poorer sections, poorer sections. So they cannot afford food or due to poverty, like even the health indicators are low for these poor sections and also their affordability. So that is a problem. And one more dimension that you can add is the farming sector or the agriculture. So along with that, you can bring in the biopharma, how it can contribute. So in farming, bio Kisan program, how it is going to help uh, the uh, 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 smaller farmers by bringing them their knowledge and their energy and time into some of the productive work. So that is what we have to explain. For this, many, uh, 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 I mean, the initiatives and the achievements, you will get around six marks. And for other uh, allied sectors with respect to poorer sections, you will get around three marks. This is what we have to write. Next question, it is with respect to the Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize, but in the year 2014, the discovery had started three decades ago in 1990s only. But this was recognized only in 2014 and it was given a Nobel Prize. These three key people, Akasaki, Amano and Nakamura, so these were given the uh, uh, prize, Nobel Prize for discovering this blue LED. Blue LED, like the red LED and green LED, like this is also like one of the fundamental lighting LED what we have. When this blue LED is covered with phosphor, covered with phosphor, we'll get the white light, white light. And this is the uh, basis of the revolution that we are having around the world. With respect to the energy consumption of the whole world, we had to come up with one or the other discovery where we can reduce the uh, 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 energy consumption because the potential what we have for the energy production, it was uh, 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 what less compared to the population of the world that is growing and also the advancement of technology, dependence on electricity, all that thing has increased. That is why this discovery was very important. And when it comes to the uh, features of this, it has improved and efficient and higher luminous, improved, efficient, less energy intake, and higher luminous. So luminous intensity compared to the fluorescent bulbs and also the uh, um, CFLs, what we have, uh, uh, or the uh, incandescent bulbs, what we had earlier, like the intensity is more. And also the per unit electric input is very less compared to the incandescent bulbs and the fluorescent bulbs. And it is basically saving the earth's resources and in India, the uh, uh, programs like CFL, uh, not CFL, this LED bulb distribution at the subsidized rates and some of the 
uh, organizations like i lead all these have contributed to the uh, embracement of uh, this particular led bulbing even in the street lights we are trying to replace the halogen bulbs what we have uh, through these leds so this is the significant achievement that we have uh, today and also with respect to the material consumption for this particular uh, uh, um, led it is very less if you look at the size of that one like it is like very uh, i mean uh, significantly less compared to the incandescent and the fluorescent bulbs and also when it comes to the quality of life white light definitely adds value to our lives and uh, compared to the incandescent bulbs what we have in 80s and 90s they have been replaced by these things and even with respect to fluorescent like the quality of life will be increased when brighter the world brighter the ideas and brighter the uh, lifestyle would be then with respect to the uh, 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 the energy supply for these is concerned even with the smaller smaller solar panels even with the smaller solar panels these leds can be lit so this has revolutionized the area of lighting uh, maybe it is like indoor lighting outdoor lighting rural urban areas so everywhere this led has been the part of life even in the poorer sections of the society so though it is 1990s discovery it has gained the importance in 2010s and 20s this is what we have to explain this is more kind of a, a, a generic question generic question but you should know like what is the importance of this blue led and how white light led is created using the blue led this is what we have to write and for explaining all this thing out of 15 like 9 marks would be given at the max but again this is kind of a essay kind of question that we have to write but you should know the particulars of this particular leds and even in the prelims exam we have seen one question uh, uh, with respect to leds so every year one or the other question would come from the energy efficiency or with respect to this smart lighting or the led lighting final question again with respect to the unf triple c cop 26 like what major decisions have been taken then or what are the important discussions that have been uh, done and also the india's commitments to uh, uh, um, this particular uh, what the agreement or the pact coming to the paris deal in 2015 like india has agreed to uh, 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 different uh, uh, aspects so through its indices that is intended nationally determined contributions maybe it is with respect to the share of uh, uh, renewable sources in energy security or uh, uh, creating the potential to reduce the carbon emission or to uh, increase the uh, pool of carbon sink by uh, afforestation all that thing and also the uh, uh, renewable energy contribution that is around 175 gigawatt by 2022 and in that 100 gigawatt was the share of uh, solar energy itself so these are the promises that india had made but uh, in the paris agreement itself it was agreed uh, uh, to that uh, if, uh, every five years every five years we are going to check like how countries have fared so when it comes to the india's contribution or india's achievement india is one of the top countries which have adhered to uh, which has adhered to the paris deal so that is one recognition that india has got and this particular arrangement is called as the ratchet mechanism where we are checking every 5 years every 5 years to provide the improved national pledges so as part of this particular summit in 2021 november india has given its own targets of you know like phasing down or to reach the carbon neutrality all that thing is agreed and when it comes to the overall discussion or the decision of this particular deal is to restrict the global average temperatures uh, compared to the industrial revolution era to 1.5 degree 1.5 degree if not possible to 2 degree centigrade so whatever the philosophy that we have for uh, uh, containing the rise in the global temperature uh, 
to 1.5 degree or maximum 2 degree centigrade that has been intact right from uh, uh, the UNCED, what we have, United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. So since then, this is intact and all the countries have adhered to that one. Then when it comes to the global carbon dioxide emission, like it is going to reduce by 45%. It is going to reduce by 45% by 2030 compared to the 2010 levels. So in 20 years span, so totally 45% reduction has to happen on the carbon dioxide emission because this is one of the uh, 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 greenhouse gas what we have and net zero by 2050. Net zero in the sense like whatever the carbon that we are carbon dioxide that we are emitting that much carbon sink has to be created or that much carbon dioxide has to be sequestered by having the natural ecosystems for uh, 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 doing that carbon sequestration. So this is what has been agreed and also for the first time for the first time the coal reducing the use of coal was discussed. So basically India and China are the countries like which depend upon coal for energy security and this was one of the uh, 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 thorn in the bone and India and uh, the China have come to the agreement that rather than phasing out, rather than phasing out, phase out means like reducing it to zero. India and China had raised for phasing down. We are going to phase down the use of coal rather than phasing it out because uh, uh, if you look at the energy conundrum of India, like we are depending upon the thermal power plants basically which are powered by coal. So we cannot do away with coal, we can only the reduce the uh, 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 proportion of coal that we use for energy production. So that was agreed upon and also India promised to draw half of its energy from renewable sources by 2030. By 2030, it is going to uh, uh, get or draw it energy or tap the energy from the non-renewable sources. And India is going to achieve the carbon neutrality by 2070. So basically, this 2050, like that, that, that is what is you know, like discussed. But India has agreed to uh, achieve this by 2070. And also, with respect to the climate financing, like we have GCF global climate fund. So again, the re-emphasis was uh, laid on the contribution of the developed countries. Developed countries, like developed countries have to contribute for this one. And also, it has to be given to the developing countries for adopting the climate change impact, climate change impact. So these are the different things which were discussed. So basically for writing what has been discussed in uh, uh, in uh, the Glasgow Pact, Glasgow Pact generally th those are the global decisions. You will get around six marks. And uh, when it comes to India's India's target or India's contribution to that one, you will get around three marks. This is what you have to write in this particular uh, paper. So again, uh, at the end, I would like to tell that the questions can be handled with ease, provided you have. A generic knowledge about all the aspects of science and technology and environment. When it comes to the specific questions in science and technology or environment, they will be equally tough for all the aspirants or all your competitors. But again, those specific questions are going to get you the extra marks. But uh, uh, some uh, of these things are matter of luck and matter of time also. So. Better you prepare for the generic questions and you should not leave any of the generic topics uh, when it comes to science and technology and environment. You have to read those topics and subtopics. You have to have the uh, proper material for those particular questions. For anything, for any help when it comes to science and environment, maybe it is with respect to answer writing, maybe it is with respect to notes making or to identify the right sources. We are always open. You can uh, 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 come and ask us. So please uh, feel free to uh, take any kind of help. So I hope you uh, uh, understood the importance of um, 
like all these questions or like the sections from where the questions are coming and uh, in the future you are going to uh, uh, do well in these particular questions and the uh, and for the people who have written uh, the exam already you can verify your answers with respect to what we have discussed here and also the people who are writing in the next year definitely you can improve your answers or you can target these areas in more efficient manner thank you thank you very much